So you're online, you're checking out the local area, and Daytona Beach is on the top of the list. Everyone wants to know the good, the bad, and the ugly. Chances are, all you can find is the good. In this video, I'm going to explain and set the record straight on the top 13 reasons why you shouldn't move to Daytona Beach, Florida, and let you decide for yourself if this really is the place for you. Make sure you stay tuned to the end. I may change your mind completely. What's up everybody, it's Jimmy! With the for sale team right here in Daytona Beach, Florida. If this is your first time on the channel and you wanna know everything about working, sleeping, playing, eating, and <laughs> the reasons why you shouldn't move to Daytona Beach, make sure you subscribe, hit the post notifications every time we release a new video. We have people reaching out literally every day via phone, text, email, and messages in bottles. Literally every day. And we love it. If you're moving or relocating anywhere here in Volusia County, make sure you reach out. Days, nights, weekends, however you need to reach us, we've got your back when you're moving to Daytona Beach, Florida. So Florida is a tropical environment. Humidity is a given. Having heat and humidity may surprisingly catch people off guard. But thankfully, you're doing your due diligence and you're learning that Florida is hot. Good on you. With the heat itself comes the ability to actually enjoy the ocean since it is warmer and more enjoyable at times during the year. Consistency is a beautiful thing and predictability is a godsend. Personally, I can't stand the thought of shoveling my driveway during the winter months and honestly, the thought of it really makes me want to vomit. If you're thinking of moving to Florida and snow is your love language, I'd highly suggest looking elsewhere. With tropical environments comes life that thrives. Bugs are inevitable literally wherever you live. Before I worked in real estate, I was actually in the pest control industry for four years. And I can tell you for a fact that if someone's saying that they don't have bugs, they're lying. I grew up in the Philippines where the bugs there make Florida's bugs look just plain cute. There we have roaches that are maybe this big, but they fly. Yeah, you heard me right. They fly. I've yet to see any flying roaches here though. They can still get to a decent size and same thing goes for the spiders as well. Pest control is a necessity. Get a service, have a professional take care of it. They live here too. They deal with the exact same issues that you're paying them to take care of. And I can guarantee that they have access to much better products than you can buy at Home Depot. So living in an area with actual things to do makes it very attractive for tourists. Florida as a whole has on average 100 million tourists that come in and out of the state every single year, with 10.2 million of those tourists coming to Daytona Beach. The great thing about it though is tourist season here is very predictable. The main draws of this area are Daytona Bike Week, Daytona 500, Spring Break obviously, and Biketoberfest. With these event dates in mind, you can easily predict when you should stay away from Main Street and when you want to avoid the beaches if you want to avoid the crowds and freely enjoy the area that you call home throughout the rest of the year. So going hand in hand with the tourist flow here in Daytona comes traffic. Now during these peak event times, you can expect a heavy influx of traffic compared to the day-to-day -day flow. It's still nowhere in comparison to the traffic you're gonna run into if you want to take I-4, to Orlando or even Tampa. Orlando sees 75 million of those tourists on average per year. Keep this in mind if you're ever on I-4 headed that direction. Okay, so I know there's a good chance you've been doing your research before you've seen this video and you've seen at least one mention of sharks. And I'm here to set the record straight that they're all completely right. Volusia County is considered the shark attack capital of the United States. On average, Volusia County as a whole is the site of nine shark bites annually. Now, I personally like to surf just down the road at New Smyrna Beach almost every single day that I can. Now, New Smyrna is considered the hot zone when it comes to these attacks. And I'd like to personally confirm that I do have all my appendages and I haven't had any issues with sharks. Let me put this into perspective. 
worldwide. In 2020, there were 57 shark attacks recorded, with only 10 of those attacks being fatal. 20 people per year die from cows. Vending machines kill two times more people per year than sharks. Now, look it up if you don't believe me, but your bed is more likely to kill you than a shark. On average, 450 people die annually from beds. So let's keep with the wildlife theme and let's talk alligators. Florida is home to roughly 1.25 million alligators. While we're talking about a beautiful beach area, the majority of Florida is covered by swamps and marshes, which these living fossils call home. Now these guys are not a fan of salt water, so you won't be seeing them in the Halifax River, but keep them in mind if you're headed into freshwater marshes and swamps. If your community is next to these type of areas, watch out, but if you're by the beach, you're fine. Now new development is huge in Volusia County as a whole. We have people reaching out literally every day to relocate to the Daytona Beach area and surrounding areas. Now, with new development comes developing into wildlife areas, which many of these animals do call home. One of these animals that do call these areas home are indeed bears. Now, similar to alligators, you should keep them in mind if your community borders these wildlife areas. A couple ways to keep these fluffy buddies away is to not leave your garbage can outside. Rinse out your empty food containers and wrappers and just put them in trash bags. I mean, just to keep the odors in. And if you can really help it, keep the really smelly stuff out of your garbage can, at least until pickup day. So snakes are a growing concern here in the state that usually gets chalked up to the entire state just being infested. Snakes are common in Florida as a whole, but the massive pythons that you see on TV, uh, those are mainly in Southern Florida. Those with smaller dogs, just to keep the odors in. And if you can really help it, keep the really smelly stuff out of your garbage can, at least until pickup day. So snakes are a growing concern here in the state that usually gets chalked up to the entire state just being infested. Snakes are common in Florida as a whole, but the massive pythons that you see on TV, those are mainly in Southern Florida. Those with smaller dogs and pets that leave them outside are advised to keep an eye on them. You don't necessarily need to worry as much up here in Daytona Beach as opposed to the fact if you were down in the Everglades. So one of the most media covered things pertaining to Florida are the hurricanes. So let me set the scene. You have the Caribbean here, which is our neighbor, and the Bermuda Triangle, which has absolutely no correlation, but I just wanted to throw that in to keep you interested. For a hurricane to form, you need warm ocean water, and moist, humid air. Sounds like Florida, right? With the technology available today, honestly, hurricanes are my natural disaster of choice. When you compare them to earthquakes, wildfires, and even blizzards. Now the builders here that are building homes, they're not ignorant to the fact that Florida does get these types of storms, and homes here are built accordingly to withstand these types of events. Predictability is a beautiful thing when it comes to a natural disaster. We know the trajectories of these hurricanes, where they're going to be hitting, where what areas are going to be affected the most, and if it gets bad enough, we have a well in advance warning to evacuate and get somewhere a little safer if the need arises. I don't know about you, but mopping up water sounds a lot more appealing than shoveling snow or dealing with insurance claims on a house that just burnt down to the ground. All right, lastly on our list of scary weather that'll keep you away is lightning. Now, Florida is considered to be the lightning capital of the United States. Guess they're number one in quite a few things. Now with the mention of all the previous weather conditions, it makes sense when you take one of the most commonly associated things with any storm in general. Now most of the time with these weather conditions, you're going to see it generalized to the entire state as a whole. Most of the activity that you're going to be seeing is going to be on the opposite end of Florida, more near Tampa and West Orlando. Daytona Beach is associated with fun in the sun for good reason, and thankfully we can avoid the majority of these issues just by living in an area that isn't heavily affected. Now keep in mind, compared to the rest of the world, Florida doesn't even rank top 10 when it comes to lightning. Lastly, we have one of the biggest concerns on anyone's mind when relocating a new area, and that is crime. After extensive research regarding this area, the good majority of information out there is outdated and heavily biased. Older news sources chalk up Daytona Beach as having the highest crime rate 
in the US. Yet they turn around and say it's one of the safest and best places to visit and live. Most of the sources that you're going to find online are heavily biased in order to deter travelers and keep spring breakers away in order to keep this hidden gem a secret. I encourage you to actually take a look at the numbers and decide for yourself if the information out there is biased heavily or not. One of the most common things that you will find is talks of obscene amounts of homelessness here in Daytona Beach. And that the amount of homelessness here in the area must have a direct correlation with the crime rate. Now let's play along and play their game and compare the amount of homelessness to other areas. So Daytona Beach, which as of now has an estimated homeless population of 300 some people, LA alone has over 66,000 homeless people. New York City has over 55,000 homeless people. And let's compare close to home with Orlando, which has just over 3,000 homeless people. Now it's pretty easy to skew numbers when you're comparing the population of millions and millions of people to an area that only has 66,000 residents. Makes sense? So there's 13 reasons why you shouldn't move to Daytona Beach, Florida. If I haven't scared you away yet and you still want to make the move, feel free to reach out via call, text, email, message in a bottle, days, nights, weekends, however you need to get a hold of us so we can help you find the perfect area that you can call home. We've got your back when you're moving to Daytona Beach, Florida. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.